Another day, another Ghibli cookie tin. I have been wanting to make a project from Kiki's Delivery Service for forever. It's one of my favorite Ghibli movies, although do I say that about all of them? Maybe. <laughs> I debated a bunch of different projects that I could have made in this, but the bakery would just be too fitting not to do it in a cookie tin. <laughs> there have been a bunch of really cool versions of the bakery done in miniature already. Miss Mini Life did an amazing version. Also, Katharina Handmade made a really cool version of the outside. And Mini Terra Mirabilly also did a super cool version of the interior. So I will leave links to all of those in the description. Our most recent Patreon project challenges were cozy and food. And what is more cozy and has lovelier food than a Ghibli film? As with any Ghibli project, we must begin with a painting. I just absolutely love painting studies of Ghibli locations, landscapes, characters, everything. <laughs> I love all of the colors that they use so much. Although my painting skills can't quite match up to the Ghibli artist, I just enjoy painting them so much. I always start by kind of color blocking everything out, mainly because I don't want to have to keep mixing the same color, <laughs> even though you do still have to anyway. I mix whatever color and then I paint pretty much everything in the painting that is that color and block it in. And then later I go in and add highlights and shadows and details and things like that over top. So we're really just layering everything. As with most of my favorite Ghibli spaces, this space is just packed with so many lovely tiny details. Not all of these details will be included in the miniature version that we make since we're working with a finite amount of space, but painting really helps to get a good idea of what is in the space and their scale in relation to each other. One of my absolute favorite details are these stained glass pendant lights. They just make the space so extra cozy at night. We're really just channeling Ursula here. She's out there living the dream, let's be real. Oh, to paint in the woods with all your crow friends. Of course, the last thing we need to do is peel our tape off, which is admittedly less satisfying with my leaky tape. So here is our bakery painting. So let's begin building our bakery. I am building in the standard cookie tin this time around. This is quaint. I did actually make a printable template. If anybody wants to build this, or something like this. It's specifically sized for this cookie tin, but I made it so that you could build it outside of a cookie tin as well. So for anybody that is interested in that, I will be putting that over on Patreon and Coffee. We kind of need to work from the back and move forward. So we're starting off with painting the wallpaper on a pizza box. Now we're off to a really great start here because I immediately painted the wall the wrong color. <laughs> I'm gonna put my paws together and pray you're not serious. I was looking at reference images that were at nighttime and the wall appears super yellow and orange because of the lighting, but it's actually white and orange during the daytime. So I made somewhat of a blunder here, but <laughs> do I want to repaint the stripes white? No, I actually really like the bright yellow better. So immediately, accuracy out the window. <laughs> I did start off using tape to do a lot of these straight lines, but the masking tape that I have always bleeds. Frankly, I think this is a major insult. So I just kind of went without it at the end and freehanded it, as we end up doing most of the time on this channel. <laughs> I painted in all of the little diamond kind of patterns, and then our back wallpaper was complete. I could honestly work on this for like another two hours and 90% of it is going to be covered by shelves. I am going to be building some very special lights into this project, but they are starting off as they always do with dollar store lights. I'm taking off the carrots from the lights, but we will save those for later. As always, I am putting a hole in the back of the tin just with a nail and hammer that I will thread the lights through. The battery pack will be attached to the back of the tin so that I can access it. I am sanding the inside surface of the back of the tin. I'm also sanding the back of the pizza box so everything will really have a good surface to adhere to. I marked where the hole needed to be and punched a hole in the wallpaper and then we have to glue it in. I am using tacky glue for the first time in this project and let me tell you, <laughs> I 
love it. I know that it's probably a surprise that I've not used taggy glue ever in the past. I was a fool, but I actually think it's one of my favorite glues now. <laughs> Do a lot of people have a favorite glue? Let me know. Then I need to begin to build the ceiling. I'm cutting a piece from some cardboard and cutting a hole in the back of it for some of the light to come through because the majority of them will be up in the ceiling. I'm covering the edges of exposed cardboard and then I need to make the texture of the wood ceiling. We start by painting the base black and then I'm painting some wood texture on some paperboard and gluing that on top. I'm cutting some kind of cloudy textured plastic from an old planner to go over the cut open area that the light will shine through. The ceiling has several beams that run all the way across it, and I'm using some balsa wood that I got from the Real Terrain Hobbies Builders Kit. Thank you again so much to Neil for that. You're gonna be seeing quite a few different supplies from that in this project. Painting it to match the ceiling and gluing it on. I do try to add as much detail to all of these pieces before I put them into the project because it's much easier to work on them separately poking holes in the ceiling where the lights will thread through. And this is the tiniest detail. There are some floral details on the wood beams on the ceiling. So of course I have to paint those on as well. Since we're building in a round shape, we have to come up with some kind of solution for the top and the bottom half circle areas. I decided I wanted to do decorative wood detail to not draw too much attention away from the project. And I wanted to utilize the location of the lights on top. So I'm poking some holes in the top panel to be stars and it'll be like Kiki flying at night. Attaching the ceiling and that top semicircle piece together. And then we're essentially repeating this process with the floor and bottom semicircle piece. I'm making the floor very much in the same way that I made the ceiling. I am also going in with matte Mod Podge on the floor to give it that subtle gloss look. Then I need to attach the floor and bottom semicircle pieces together and that whole piece will lay into the bottom of the tin. To attach the top piece in, I have to first thread all of the lights through the holes, of course, threading at the end of the strand to hang into the project. Those will end up being our hanging pendant lights later. I'm keeping those two pieces secure with a little paperboard cable holder and then just gluing all of that in as well. I'm making some bottom trim out of craft foam and painting it off white because it obviously just makes the biggest difference. <laughs> then we start on the furniture. There are five big pieces of furniture in this project. I'm starting with the big back bread shelf. I go about building all of the furniture pieces in pretty much the exact same way. I start out by cutting the back piece to the size that I need it to be and then building everything off of that. As always, I'm deciding each piece material based on thickness. So for the thickest pieces, I am using foam core. Slightly thinner than that is cardboard. I do have a couple of different thicknesses and types of cardboard and then I am capping off any large areas or exposed edges with paperboard or cardstock. And then I just need to go in and fill any gaps with joint compound. This isn't always a 100% necessary step, but it does make everything look a lot cleaner. I moved on to build the shelf next to it in the corner in pretty much exactly the same way. This one does have that fun little decorative trim on the top shelf. This is also the point at which I realized I needed to extend the wallpaper on both sides of the tin as well. Well, here we go again. <laughs> So I just painted the same pattern on some cardstock and stuck it in there. The top trim does have a little floral detail as well. I don't think you're gonna see this much at all. It was necessary. Since this top trim needs to slide under the wood beams from the ceiling, I made this one out of paperboard and then I continued the trim on both of the sides as well. Then I started working on the front three displays and tables. These ones were just a little bit different because they were slightly thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom rather than just rectangles but all of the same principles apply in that I started with the back base and then built everything off of that based on thickness of materials. The front displays of course do have windowed fronts, so cutting a frame out and then there will be pieces of recycled plastic packaging attached. I am also adding cardstock hinges onto the back and creating little doors that I can open while I'm putting 
things inside of it later. I did slightly skew all of the proportions of these pieces because I am working in quite a thin space. They are just a little bit thinner than they would have been in the film. The table that the cash register is on is just slightly different. I started with a foam core top, cut slits in it, and then pushed paperboard down into these slits to create the sides of the table. Then after that, it was really just adding some wood trim details on the sides, and then we could get down to painting everything. After all the pieces were painted, I went in and added plastic packaging to the frames for the windowed displays. Then we start the longest part of this whole project, making all of the baked goods for the displays. Too many if you ask me. I'm starting by making some stacks of what I think are cookies by punching out some circles of craft foam and painting them. I'm doing two different color variations and then painting some sort of jam or filling in the middle. I'm creating some little stacks that will glue into the display. Only the front cookie really has to be fully painted because you only see the sides of the ones behind. So I glued some normal hole punched pieces behind and then matched the outside color afterwards. I am also making these sandwich looking pieces in a very similar way. So I'm painting triangles of craft foam and gluing them together in a sandwich. I glued those pieces in, but there are so many different variations of things to build. I painted some different beads that looked kind of a little bit like bread or pastry to me. Then I started making some different things out of Sculpey, starting with some croissants, just trying to mimic some of the shapes that are in the display. I also made the pieces hanging from the top of the back bread shelf. I do believe it is a German New Year's pretzel or something similar. I started by making it flat at first and then drawing the texture on, and that worked decently well, but I kind of wanted to get more of that braided look. So I rolled two really thin pieces of Sculpey and twisted them around each other and then formed it into the shape. It has a little bit more texture and a little bit more dimension. I started making some other tiny little pastries. Then I started sculpting some of the bread. There's a few different variations of this. There's a round one, a longer one, and also some loaves. And once all of those were nice and burnt, Well, I like pancakes, provided they're not burned. Mm. It was time to paint them. Yeah, it's true, true, I'm stuck in a loop, losing control, I can't get over in the void I can't be sober you're killing me so I also thought these beads looked quite similar to the bread on one of the shelves so I just painted a bunch of those if I can ever avoid sculpting I will. <laughs> to get that crispy bread gradient, I'm cutting a piece of a makeup sponge and using that to sponge on a separate color on the top of the bread. I'm painting on some details where I have carved on patterns in the clay. There were some square ones that were kind of wrapped in a cupcake wrapper, so I'm just using some white tissue paper and gluing it on and folding it up around that. And then we can start gluing some of these in. New Year's pretzel is hanging from a little hook at the top of the bread shelf. So I made those out of some really thin jewelry wire. And then I'm using the tops of three flat head pins to be little nails. This was actually super convenient because since the top of the shelf was foam core, I could just poke these into that surface. Happy accidents. <laughs> the front displays do have everything on trays. So I'm going to create the illusion of that with some thin strips of cardstock painted black, and then just have to finish off some of the details on the display cases, painting all of these furniture pieces with a matte Mod Podge to give it that sealed wood finish. I'm also gonna paint the small little decorative detail on the top of the back right shelf. And then I'm starting to work on all of the other little props in the scene. 
This is a piece that you won't really see all that much in the end. How many times do you hear me say that on my channel? But there is a small little clipboard hanging from the back bread shelf on the side. To make that, I am cutting a bunch of little scraps of my tea dyed paper. I'm making the little clip at the top from cardstock, just cutting two halves and folding it in the middle and then poking a really tiny hole in the center. On the top paper, I drew a sort of inventory sheet, perhaps. The back of the clipboard, I am just making out of paperboard and painting that a dark brown, and then starting to glue everything together. Pretty simple, but a really fun little piece. On the same side of the shelf, there's another little holder for various papers and things like that. So I'm just folding that from some cardstock and painting it silver. Both of these props do require some small wire elements. So I'm taking a wire piece and bending it into a hook to hang the clipboard off of. I'm also gluing a top wire above the silver paper holder, sticking the papers in, and then we move on to the cash register. The cash register has some of the most difficult shapes of anything in this project. I essentially start by drawing the side and the back and then building off from there. I'm gluing some paperboard strips on the back to add some textural details and also gluing on the side change area. I'm painting all of that a kind of robin's egg blue color and then we need to add on some of the details. I'm adding some cardstock buttons and also painting on price numbers. Then I'm building the bottom base of the cash register which is the money drawer. This is just a wooden rectangular box with some trim details. One of my favorite little details in the bakery is this pot of flowers. To make this pot, I am cutting off a piece of some kind of body wash or soap dispenser pump. It seemed like it would be a good size for this. And then to make the handle for that, I thought this would be a great opportunity to finally try Milliput. I have been wanting to try Milliput for forever and I finally got some in Neil's box. So here I am thanking Neil once again for expanding my crafting horizons. I'm sure most of you know, but Milliput is an epoxy putty. I just mixed a really small amount of it, started by sealing off the bottom of the cylinder, blended that into the plastic as best as I could, and then I'm rolling out a thin strand that I'm cutting a length from that seemed like it would be a good size for the handle. Then I'm just curving it into that shape and attaching it onto the plastic. After that cured, I am painting it all white to blend in with the rest of the vase. I had a little bit of the milliput left, so I thought I would use that to make the decorative wood details that are going to go on the top and bottom sections of the tin. I'm building them off of paperboard because I thought that would make shaping it a bit easier. I'm making Gigi on the bottom, and on the top I'm going to make Kiki flying on her broom through the night sky. Working with Milliput was quite similar to sculpting generally. It is a little sticky, but if you just use water like you would with a ceramic clay, it's pretty similar to work with. On the top, I'm going to make Kiki flying on her broom through the sky. I'm cutting a piece of a used matchstick for her broom and drew the basic shapes on paperboard to work off of. I just did my best. These are supposed to be relatively basic wood carvings, so at this scale, I was really just happy if you could at least tell what they were supposed to be generally. There are various flowers in here over the course of the film, but I liked the pink and red flowers the most, <laughs> so of course we're going with that. Starting out by building up the stems and greenery at the bottom, I am using a fake leaf that I have already cut some pieces from in another project. I glued a small piece of a cotton ball inside just to fill it up so I could start building off the top. I'm sticking in all the tiny leaf pieces. To prepare for the flowers, I am sticking in some green jewelry wire at various heights to build up off of. Then we're going with my favorite cheap miniature flower method. This time was actually good because I didn't have to dye it because I had some red tissue paper. So essentially I just put the tissue paper in water and then scrunch and form it into a vague flower shape. After those dry, I started sticking them on the ends of the wires and building out some more leaves from that as well at different heights. There is a little doily under the pot and I happened to have just a tiny bit of some kind of similar white lace that I believe I extracted from some kind of birthday card. So I cut a section of that to go under it. Then I started building a basket for some baked good displays on the counter. I started by building the base shape from paperboard and cardstock. And then for the outside texture, I am using the inside of this corrugated packaging that something was mailed in. I'm cutting super, super thin strips of this 
and then laying them in rows going up the basket. I also put a couple of strips on both sides of the handle and painted the inside to match the basket color. Then I had to make the treats inside, so I'm doing that much like a lot of the previous ones from Craft Foam and just painting it and laying them in there. I wanted to make at least part of the painting on the right wall to add some interest, but with the placement I figured I would only do half of it. So I am painting that on some cardstock and then laying a white matte border over top of that, then attaching some recycled plastic packaging over the top for glass, and finishing it off with a thin border made from some painted paperboard. Then I had to start making jars. So many jars. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Yeah, me too. I'm very tired. I had a whole variety of different sizes of straws and plastic tubes from soap bottles. I am using those to make some different sized jars. I'm painting the inside of the straw, trying to leave a little bit of clear at the bottom so it looks more like a jar. Then I'm painting some more craft foam punched circles for lids and gluing those on top, as well as some tiny labels that I just drew on paper. I'm also making a slightly different jar variation that has a cloth on top. So I'm just using tissue paper over the lid and folding it down around the jar. I also just had to make some of these tiny pink bows to go on the outside with thread. I'm not gonna lie, some of these were really easy to tie, and then some of them were so unbelievably frustrating. You gotta be kidding! So, what's everyone spending their Saturdays doing? I'm here trying to tie the world's tiniest bows. Then starting to attach all of those onto the shelf. There were some kind of strawberry milk bottles that I'm making from a thin soap bottle tube, making it in very much the same way, it's just taller. Painting on the logos this time, and there's a little tape seal over the top as well. I'm also making some other little jars in the same way, attaching those in as well. And finally making these little chocolate boxes or something for the back shelf with some pieces of foam cut to squares, painted brown, and then attaching the label. Of course, I have to make Kiki and Gigi figures. I'm pulling one from my magical bag of strangely designed figures, the only one with a vague dress shape. I'm sizing Gigi based on that. Gigi is gonna be made from Sculpey. I really just did my best at the tiny scale to put everything together and make it look vaguely cat-shaped. This was quite difficult. <laughs> Hopefully the paint will save it as always. Now Kiki has to go through quite a transformation. I'm filing and sanding away lots of areas on this. Since I had to get rid of so much, I went in with my Dremel. I've never used a Dremel for sanding plastic and I have read it can melt it. I'm gonna stay on a low rotation. If it doesn't work, hey, we just do it by hand. Which was honestly a lifesaver here. <laughs> I definitely could have done it by hand, but I would have been sitting there for days, let's be real. I'm obviously gonna go and do finer details that are really in there by hand with my file. Oh, I love my Dremel. I'm filling some small areas with joint compound and adding some tissue paper to make her sleeves bulkier around her arms. I don't know if I quite got all of the shapes right. This was quite a difficult figure to work off of. Then it was time to paint, where hopefully we can save these figures. The original figure had what I think might be a purse in her hand, so I just made that into a loaf of bread. Let's be real, I'd rather have bread than a purse. <laughs> For Kiki's headband, I am using red tissue paper, getting a strip and just laying it on. And then I created a tiny bow as well and stuck it on top. Then it was Gigi's turn. Kiki, look, it's me. I needed to add some whiskers. So I used some cut pieces of black thread and attached those on. Ah, ah. Then I had to finish up just a couple of things to prepare for assembly. I went to finish off the top and bottom wood panels, so I added some trim. I painted on a vague wood texture, 
and then glued on the Kiki and Gigi detail pieces. Went over everything with matte Mod Podge for that sweet, sweet, glossy wood finish. And then, of course, I had to add some thread whiskers on that Gigi as well. Finally, I made some trim to go around the small faux doorway that will be all the way on the left side of the back wall of the tin. Then it was finally time for the main assembly. <laughs> But we're missing something, aren't we? After most everything was in there, we had one final piece to make, and that was the beautiful stained glass pendant lights. I needed to wait until the end for these to be able to determine the scale. These were quite a tricky thing to build. I cut some frames from paperboard and painted them black, started building the upper octagon that those will attach to, and painting that black as well. I attached some plastic to the frames, painted on some stained glass patterns, and then I went in and started coloring those pieces with permanent marker. I also used some tiny pieces of blue lighting gels because my blue marker was <laughs> just completely dead. <laughs> I glued those to the bottom of the octagon. There are also some small top pieces that I made in pretty much exactly the same way. I needed a chain for these to hang from, and I was quite stumped because I don't have a chain that is small enough for this scale. Kiki, we've got a problem. So I went back to my wonderful corrugated packaging and cut a thin strip of that. I folded it in half and lined it up to be quite a good chain shape. I did previously also color the lights with an orange permanent marker. The way that it was interacting with the yellow wallpaper, it was giving me abandoned office liminal space. Then I just had to thread the lights through and attach them in, put the chain on, and our bakery was finally complete. So here is our finished bakery. This time, of course, the concept for the final shots was setting it up to look a little bit like a bakery. Since the walls were striped in the bakery, I decided I would go ahead and go with that theme. We had a striped sheet that I put on my backdrop stand because I thought that would be nice with the striped wallpaper in the project. I'm using my computer chair mat for the base because it's that nice dark wood color. You'll be happy to know that I did actually make some effort and steamed the sheet in the backdrop this time. I went around and gathered anything that I thought would sort of go with this project and started trying some different layouts and ways to set up the frame. Any kind of cafe things like a rolling pin, some coffee in a jar, a nice little cake stand, 
things like that. And I finally settled on this layout. I didn't want to have anything too colorful and draw too much attention away from the project. So we just want to have some things to fill up the space and be part of the theme, but that won't be too distracting. This time around, I am lighting it with my lamp and also my softbox in the background. This is a relatively common setup for me. As always, I need to mention that my Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro and the studio version of DaVinci Resolve were provided to me by Black Magic, but there is a free version of DaVinci Resolve if you wanna try any of these things out yourself. I always do at least two different lighting situations when I shoot a project. This one is a little bit more tricky because the built-in lights obviously make it the best, but during the daytime, they were off in the movie, so I figured I needed a couple of shots of both, but I wanted to focus on the ones with the lights on because that was a huge part of this project. When switching over to the nighttime shots, I went ahead and added some blue gels in the background to really give it that contrast with the warm interior of the shop versus the cool blue background. These ones were definitely my favorite shots. I just really love the lighting and the color. Color is always one of my favorite things to work on. I work a lot with color practically in that I use things like gels to color my lighting. And of course I think about color a lot when I'm building the projects. And then going in in color grading is basically just another pass at making the colors exactly what I want them to be. You can seriously do so much with color. It can really transform the whole look of a scene for sure. This time around, I also do really want to talk about sound, even though I am more on the visual side, but I actually think sound is in many ways even more important than the visuals. Obviously, it's the best if everything is great. I think I've mentioned this quite a few times before, but editing to music is one of my absolute favorite things to do in life. I spend so many hours listening to all sorts of bizarre music trying to find the perfect one for each project that I'm working on. I'll often put a few different ones in the edit to see what fits the vibe more of the final shots. Oftentimes I'll use a few different music tracks and I'll kind of mix them to be exactly what I want them to be. Sound is an amazing way to create atmosphere. Sometimes I even build out a soundscape before shooting any Thing. I made the soundscape for my Halloween Witch's Treehouse miniature back in April last year because I knew exactly what I wanted it to sound like and what I wanted the project to feel like. So I did that before I even built any kind of miniature for it. This includes music, of course, but also sound effects. Sound effects are the life of any video. <laughs> Obviously this applies to some projects more than others, but to create an atmosphere you need to build out what the environment sounds like. A lot of Ghibli projects revolve around building out nature, or for example in Howl's bedroom it was about really creating that subtle hint of magic. To be honest I'm not an expert in sound, which is probably obvious, but Depending on the size of the space, you might add reverb, you might pitch shift things, you might change the dynamics. There's just so many things. Those really tiny sound details bring so much life to the videos. There will be some additional behind the scenes over on Patreon. Thank you so, so much as always for giving this channel so much support even when there are long waits like this. I can only do these big projects because of all of you. So I hope it was worth the wait. This is in fact only part one to this video. The next thing that I'm working on will be the lid for this tin project and also the outside of it. If you're interested, look forward to that.